Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. The upcoming Lok Sabha elections will be missing a few prominent leaders in the electoral fray. While in some cases parties are struggling with the reluctance of prominent leaders to contest direct elections, in others they are having to retire some erstwhile popular leaders. Also, as in the case of Tamil Nadu, a few of the noted political personalities are no longer on the scene to lead their respective political parties. Also, both within the NDA and the UP, a number of leaders have opted out of the fight in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. While some leaders have cited health concerns, others are focusing on state politics. Today in India, we look at few of these political personalities who will not be seen in the general elections this time. We also talk about leaders who themselves are not contesting the Lok Sabha polls but will be keenly watched due to the significance they hold in regional politics and also their crucial role in shaping the national political discourse. The 2019 general elections is seeing the BJP opt for younger faces in preference of the old guard. For many BJP veterans, it has been the end of a journey. Such leaders include LK Advani, who will not be contesting from Gandhinagar constituency this time. Similarly, Murli Manohar Joshi, BC Khanduri, Karya Munda, also Kalraj Mishra are not contesting this time. Old BJP war horses will not be seen in the Lok Sabha electoral battle of 2019. Party stalwart Lal Krishna Advani will not be contesting the Lok Sabha polls this time around. BJP President Amit Shah will contest instead from Advani's erstwhile Gandhinagar seat. As the longest serving BJP president, 91 year old Advani has won from Gandhinagar in Gujarat since 1998. The political retirement for him comes after a long stint in active politics. One of the founders of the BJP, Advani, has been a RSS Pracharak and a member of the Jan Sangh. He served as Minister of Information and Broadcasting in the Muraji Desai government from 1977 to 1979. A prominent leader of the Ram Mandir movement, Advani led a Rath Yatra from Somnath to Ayodhya in 1990. LK Advani also served as Deputy Prime Minister from 2002 to 2004 under Atal Bihari Vajpayee. He also served as Minister of Home Affairs in the BJP-led NDA government from 1998 to 2004. He was the Prime Ministerial candidate of the BJP in the 2009 Lok Sabha elections. In 2015, Advani was awarded the Padma Vibhushan. Now, in the case of Advani ji, you know, in Gandhinagar, in fact, that constituency he has been uh, representing it since 91 excepting for a brief period when Vajpayee ji had got elected. Since then, he has been uh, uh, representing the constituency. Now, today, after the Gujarat Assembly elections, which was held last year, BJP is facing a lot of challenge. So, they feel if Amit Shah himself contests from Gandhinagar, it will give a boost to BJP all over Gujarat. And second thing is, Amit Shah himself was a polling agent for Advani ji for a long time from Gandhinagar. So, there, there is a generational shift and there is a general sharpening. Of course, for the leaders, it's a very painful decision because uh, they feel that, uh, you know, uh, they are being considered unwanted, that, that they are no more popular. So, there is a lot of personal pain involved in this. But then politics is all about, you know, parties trying to win as many seats as possible. Another member of the BJP Old Guard, Murli Manohar Joshi, will not be seen in the polls this time. Joshi's office said the 85-year-old veteran leader had been conveyed the party's decision by BJP General Secretary Ram Lal. Joshi had vacated his Varanasi seat that he won in 2009 for Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2014. He then contested from Kanpur and won the seat. Murli Manohar Joshi was first elected to the Lok Sabha in 1977. One of the founding members of the BJP, he was the party president between 1991 to 1993. He later became Union Human Resources Development Minister in the NDA government, headed by Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Joshi was awarded Padma Vibhushan, the second highest civilian award in 2017 by the government. Other BJP veterans who will not contest in 2019 include B.C. Khanduri, Karya Munda, Kalraj Mishra and a few others. All of these are many-term MPs and over 80 years of age. 
The party says it is a principled decision that veterans should make way for younger leaders. And I think the indications right from the beginning were very clear that the people who have crossed the age of 75 uh, would have to kind of step aside. And if you remember, even in the formation of the government, when this uh, government was formed in 2014, we heard similar voices. And as a result, we saw many senior leaders were asked to stay out and or rather were kept out and then younger faces were brought into the party. I think it is continuing the same street. The Bharatiya Janata Party is creating its own um, uh, next generation leadership that they want to promote and come up and that is one reason why. In the current government, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj is also not contesting the Lok Sabha polls due to health reasons. The 66-year-old leader decided to stay away from the electoral fray due to her health issues post her kidney transplant in December 2016. She currently represents Madhya Pradesh's Vidisha constituency, which she won in 2014 for a second term. Sushma Swaraj has been elected seven times as a member of parliament and three times as a member of the Legislative Assembly. At the age of 25 in 1977, she became the youngest cabinet minister in Haryana. She also served as the fifth chief minister of Delhi from 13th October 1998 to 3rd December 1998. Sushma Swaraj has held portfolios like information and broadcasting, telecommunications and health under the NDA government. As far as the Sushma Swaraj, uh, the External Affairs Minister is concerned, I think she herself made it clear that she is not going to contest elections. Uh, probably uh, everybody knows she had undergone a surgery which required a renal transplant and after that uh, she came back and uh, took the responsibility of running the External Affairs Ministry with full uh, uh, gear. So I think we must acknowledge and compliment her for work and if she respect her decision to not to come into electoral politics. But she also made it clear that she may not be contesting elections, but does not mean she is retiring from politics. The BJP appointed Union Minister Uma Bharati as its national vice president after she conveyed to the party leadership her wish to not contest the general elections. She said she wants to go on an 18-month-long pilgrimage starting May. Uma Bharati represents Jhansi in the Lok Sabha and is currently serving as the Cabinet Minister for Drinking Water and Sanitation. Uma Bharati was elected to the Lok Sabha for the first time in 1989 from Khajuraho. She was a Cabinet Minister in the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government and a prominent face of the Ram Mandir movement. She has also been the Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh between 2003 to 2004. Similarly, NDA veteran and LJP chief Ram Vilas Paswan also bowed out of the Lok Sabha polls. LJP state president and minister Pashupati Kumar Paras will replace elder brother and union minister Ram Vilas Paswan in Hajipur. Ram Vilas Paswan was first elected to the Lok Sabha in 1977. He has been a Lok Sabha MP seven times and Rajya Sabha MP once. He has also held various cabinet positions in both NDA and UPA governments. With inputs from Lina Sharma, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Parties within the UPA are also facing problems finding suitable candidates to contest the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. A number of Congress leaders have expressed the desire to stay away from the electoral fray this time around. Who are they and what are the reasons being cited by them? Let's find out in our next report. After an abysmal performance in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections, the Congress is struggling to find suitable candidates to put up a tough fight in a number of states. Several party bigwigs have either refused or are reluctant to contest direct elections. Prominent names include former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, who was offered the Amritsar Lok Sabha seat in Punjab. The two-time former Prime Minister has a huge fan following in Punjab. Keeping this in mind, the Congress leadership gave him an offer to fight from Amritsar which is home to the holiest Sikh shrine, Golden Temple. According to news reports, Punjab Chief Minister Amrinder Singh urged Manmohan Singh to only file his nomination papers, while he would take full responsibility for his campaign in the constituency. Amrinder Singh is also learned to have told the former Prime Minister that he would camp in Amritsar and personally run his election campaign. However, Manmohan Singh has not agreed to the offer, citing age and health concerns. Another big Congress face who refused to contest direct elections is former Maharashtra Chief Minister Prithviraj Chavan. The senior congressman has stated categorically that he has no plans to contest the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. A former Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Chavan was elected for three terms to the Lok Sabha in a row 
from his hometown Karar in 1991, 1996 and 1998. He lost to NCP Srinivas Patil in 1999. His name was doing the rounds as a probable candidate for the Pune Lok Sabha seat this time. But Chawan dismissed the reports saying he has no plans to move to national politics. Similarly, K.C. Venugopal, senior Congress leader from Kerala's Alapura constituency, who is also the party's general secretary and in charge of party affairs in Karnataka, has stated that he is not interested in contesting the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Like Chawan, he insists on staying in state politics and serving people of his state. Interestingly, K.C. Venugopal had performed remarkably well in the 2014 elections, wherein he had beaten his closest competitor by a margin of nearly 20,000 votes. Similar reluctance is being witnessed in Haryana, where prominent party faces have refused to contest the Lok Sabha elections, instead wanting to focus on the state elections due later this year. Today, politics is undergoing a change and uh, the, today's elections are a big challenge for every party. So parties are looking at for a generational change because you are also seeing that every year more than one point, uh, I mean for, for every general election there are more than a crore of first time young voters. So parties are looking at ways to you know attract young voters and retain the old voters. So therefore there is a shift in the party in the way they choose their candidates. Another setback to the UPA was the pullout of veteran leader and NCP Supremo Sharad Pawar from the Lok Sabha battle. A Rajya Sabha member since 2014, Sharad Pawar had earlier been elected to Lok Sabha seven times. Six terms out of these were from his home constituency Baramati in Pune, but he shifted to Madha, which was created in 2008 after delimitation of seats. He chose not to contest the 2014 Lok Sabha polls and entered parliament through the Rajya Sabha. For the upcoming general election this year, Pawar was speculated to contest from Madha. He, however, made way for younger members in the family and announced his decision to not take the poll plunge this time. Parties will have to do what works. Even as they hold these leaders in great esteem and respect, they will have to look at uh, what the electorate wants. Now, a party needs to have infusion of young faces, young leadership, young blood, because that gives the party the dynamism. Now, this problem is there in all the parties. Today, you find uh, Sharad Pawar, you know, because of pressure within his own family that more the younger lot should take over. His daughter is already representing Baramati uh, for two terms she has done. Now, the pressure is on Pawar's other uh, members of his family that, uh, you know, uh, his uh, ne nephews must also be given a chance. So, so much so, Pawar uh, himself decided that he will not contest this year's election. The Maharashtra Navnirman Sena, led by Raj Thakre, has also announced it will not be contesting the 2019 Lok Sabha polls so as to avoid division of anti-BJP Shiva Sena votes. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. There are some other political leaders as well who are neither part of the NDA nor the UPA who will not be contesting the elections this time around. But this does not mean that they will be missing in action because they hold special significance for both the national parties. We'll talk about them after this very quick break. Do stay with us. Prolific British poet and story writer Joseph Rudyard Kipling, one of the first masters of short stories in English. In 1894 appeared his Jungle Book, which became a children's classic all over the world. Kim, the story of Kimball O'Hara and his adventures in the Himalayas, is perhaps his most felicitous work published. Set in and concerned with India, he had come to know and love so well. In 1907, Kipling became the first English language writer to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. Watch The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira, at 6.30 p.m. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge.
प्रजा के सामूहिक निर्णय का आदर करना आवश्यक है इनके फैसले को मैं और मेरे सहयोगी पूरी तरह से और नम्रता पूर्वक स्वीकार करते हैं हम संख्या बल के सामने सर झुकाते हैं और आपको विश्वास दिलाते हैं कि जो कार्य हमने अपने हाथ में लिया है वो जब तक राष्ट्र के उद्देश्य पूरा नहीं कर लेंगे तब तक विश्राम से नहीं बैठेंगे मैं नरेंद्र दामोदर दास मोदी ईश्वर की शपथ लेता हूँ देखिए हमारा विशेष कार्यक्रम चुनाव का सफर सिर्फ राज्यसभा टीवी पर देखिए देश देशांतर मेरे साथ रात साढ़े आठ बजे सिर्फ राज्यसभा टीवी पर Welcome back. You're watching in depth. There are also some stalwarts who have shown reluctance to contest the upcoming Lok Sabha elections, but will continue to play a key role in campaigning as well as other party activities. These include BSP chief Mayawati, who announced last week that she will not contest the Lok Sabha polls owing to the interests of her party. She, however, indicated that she could still be in the running for the prime minister's post. She also said, if need be. she would get elected to the lok sabha later odisha chief minister navin patnaik has also decided to stay with state politics he will be contesting from the hinjli and bijapur assembly seats in odisha instead of a lok sabha seat the state of tamil nadu brings crucial 39 seats to the lok sabha While the late Chief Minister J J Lalitha led AIA DMK won 37 seats in 2014 Lok Sabha, rival DMK could not manage to secure a single seat back then. Both J Lalitha and DMK Patriya Karunanidhi have passed away since the last general election. But despite the absence of two charismatic rival leaders, Tamil Nadu will be feeling their presence in these Lok Sabha elections. Our next report traces the political alliances of the DMK and the AIA DMK at the center and how the Dravidian parties are likely to fare in the upcoming general elections. Tamil Nadu politics will miss two of its stalwart politicians in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Long-standing leader of the Dravidian movement and 10-time president of the DMK M Karunanidhi was known to millions of his admirers as Kalaingar the longest serving elected party chief in the democratic world Karunanidhi led the party from 1969 until his death in 2018 Karunanidhi entered politics at the age of 14 he won his first assembly election in 1957 at the age of 33 years this was the same year that the DMK took the electoral plunge after it broke away from the Dravida Kadagam The party won 15 out of the 112 assembly seats and secured two parliamentary seats but due to a dispute over the election symbol the DMK giant was not recognized by the election commission in the 1957 poll The election commission formally recognized the DMK as a political party in 1962 when it won 7 and 25 seats in general elections of 1962 and 1967 Karunanidhi's influence spread far beyond Tamil Nadu and played a key role on the national stage. His talent was to stitch alliances with the center, keeping in mind the aspiration of his voters. The DMK fought in alliance with the Congress in 1971 and 1980 and secured 23 and 16 seats in the Lok Sabha elections. His party was part of VP Singh's National Front government in 1989 to 1990. The United Front government in 1996 to 
The Bharatiya Janata Party led National Democratic Alliance from 1998 to 2004 and the Congress led United Progressive Alliance between 2004 to 2009 and 2009 to 2014. In 2003, the DMK pulled out from the NDA in protest against the agreed agenda of governance by the BJP-led NDA. However, the DMK move did not pose a direct threat to the stability of the ruling NDA. The political landscape in the country and Tamil Nadu shifted during emergency and the years that followed. In the 1977 elections, the DMK extended support to the Janata Party and managed to secure only five seats. The ADMK, led by M.G. Ramachandran, was formed in 1972 after breaking from the DMK. While the DMK opposed the emergency imposed by Indira Gandhi-led Congress, arch-rival MGR and his party supported Indira Gandhi and a 20-point program. The Congress faced defeat in the rest of the country, but the ADMK Congress Left Alliance swept the Tamil Nadu elections, bagging 34 out of 39 seats in the state. From 1989 to 2016, the AIA DMK was led by Jay Lalita, who served as Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu on five occasions. The AIA DMK allied with the Congress and swept to power in the 1991 Assembly elections under her leadership. The AIA DMK formed an alliance with the BJP and Vico's MDMK during the parliamentary elections in 1998, but withdrew support a year later, leading to the fall of the BJP government. Following this, the AIA DMK once again allied with the Congress. However, despite the popular measures taken by the government in the 2004 Lok Sabha election, the party reforged alliance with the BJP, but did not win a single seat out of the 39 Lok Sabha seats in the state. In 2009, the AIA DMK managed to win nine seats. Contesting without allies in the 2014 Lok Sabha election, the AIA DMK won an unprecedented 37 out of 39 seats in Tamil Nadu, emerging as the third largest party in parliament. As for the DMK and the Congress, neither won a single seat in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections. The DMK and Congress have sealed a pre-poll alliance for the 2019 general elections. The announcement came close on the heels of the BJP and the ruling AIA DMK sealing an alliance in the state. The upcoming Lok Sabha elections will be a test for both AIA DMK and DMK, which will be contesting without Jayalalitha and Karunanidhi in decades. Of the two parties, the transition in the DMK has been smoother, with Karunanidhi having installed his son MK Stalin as the party president in his lifetime. The AIA DMK is finding itself having to overcome the problems of infighting after Jailalita's death. While both the parties are likely to continue to dominate Tamil Nadu politics for many more decades, the void left by two charismatic leaders will be filled in the 2019 elections. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So that's it from us today in in-depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with an in-depth analysis of some other subject. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and send us your valuable feedback as well as suggestions. Thank you very much for your time.